Okay, we are live. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Anthony Avina, and welcome to On Request Magazine Presents the Edge of Sanity podcast. Uh, this podcast covers everything in the world of entertainment movies, television, video games, you know, um, books, comic books, um, all sorts of stuff, music, everything. Uh, and so we are going to go over some news items from the week. Um, and yeah. And I, before we start, I wanted to get this podcast going by saying um, we're um, going to do our sponsor now. Um, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash on request magazine. The link will be down in the description below. With over 150,000 titles to choose from now on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, and MP3 player. Uh, we are currently reading Gone Girl. Uh, make sure, I mean, we love this book. We are looking forward to the film, and uh, it's really a pleasure to listen to. So make sure you find that or any other book on audible.com. Use the link down below to get your free trial today. All right, so now we are up and running. Um, just making sure that we are going. Podcast seems to be working. Um, just trying to make sure everything is all set. I'm going to check our connection right now. Good connection. Okie doke. So. Thank you guys for checking out today's podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said before, we cover all forms of entertainment, and I'm going to go over some news items during the week. And, of course, we start with our movie section. Um, one, The first item, and it's pretty cool, is going to be, of course, from Marvel. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which was the second Marvel film to come out this summer, um, from Marvel Studios themselves, I should say. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is now the number one domestic box office hit uh, for this summer. Um, it's grossed over 280 80 million domestically so far. Um, so, obviously, before the film even came out, a sequel was already announced at Comic-Con. Uh, but now, especially due to this enormous success, uh, the film's sequel is already in the works, with James Gunn going over um, the outline for a script right now. Um, and he's already mentioned adding more female characters from the comics into the next sequel. So, um, you know, if you're a comic book fan, start the guessing now. <laughs> um, also, legendary Oscar-winning actor Al Pacino recently saw the film, Guardians of the Galaxy, and raved about it. He loved the film and said that if he were ever offered a role in the sequel or any Marvel movie, he would take it. And with James Gunn being very heavily inspired by Al Pacino's The Godfather performances, the first and second one, um, this would be a great win if Marvel was able to do this, especially considering that very talented, Oscar-winning actors, um, award-winning actors, I should say, have been you know, flocking to the Marvel Universe with Benicio Del Toro, Robert Redford, Ben Kingsley, and more uh, taking on roles in the universe. So if Al Pacino uh, were to appear in the films, it would only serve to highlight the, the enormous success that Marvel has had. Um, only other thing for Marvel is a rumor going around right now that Joaquin Phoenix himself is in talks to play Doctor Strange in the new films. Um, although the sources that say this also claim that um, the actor is unsure at this point whether or not he should take on a role in a major blockbuster franchise right now. So that's the rumor. Nothing confirmed or denied yet. Um, second news item uh, comes from, of course, DC Comics and their film Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Um, set pictures have surfaced of Henry Cavill on the set of what looks like to be a Gotham jail, uh, at least the outside of it. Um, this is not Arkham Asylum, or uh, Blackgate Prison, uh, it just says Gotham Jail for now. Um, so we're thinking it's more of a low-key kind of jail cell. Um, 
but he has been filmed on the set in his Clark Kent outfit. Um, also taken pictures of was Jesse Eisenberg, who showed off a like reddish brown wig that he was wearing, possibly hiding the bald cap. So fans are speculating whether or not he will appear first uh, with his original brown, reddish brown hair from the comics before losing his hair and getting the bald cap. Uh, for Lex Luthor is most notably known as being bald. Um, but this is all speculation thus far. The set pictures um, did not seem to show Jesse Eisenberg in you know action as Lex Luthor. It was kind of a uh, candid photo. So not anything confirmed yet, but uh, it's our first sighting of Jesse Eisenberg as anything Lex Luthor. So, um, what else? Rumors. Rumors going around. Um, rumors and confirmed rumors. So, first the rumors. Um, legendary actor, um, you know, of our current times, uh, no, most notably known for playing Sherlock and for also playing Khan in the recent Star Trek Into Darkness, Benedict Cumberbatch is rumored to be up for a role in, Des in the Justice League films, uh, possibly even in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice as a cameo. Uh, the, he's either rumored to be Martian Manhunter, which is a well-known Justice Leaguer from the comics, um, who is the last Martian uh, from the planet Mars who comes to Earth uh, in disguise and works as a police detective named, named John Jones, uh, who that is his daytime job, and then at night he's a Martian Manhunter, the Justice Leaguer. That would be cool. The other rumor is that he is also going to be up for a villainous role in Batman v Superman, uh, either as Brainiac or Metallo, and I'm sure there's a whole slew of other possible uh, villains he could play. Um, Either way, even if you know it was a minor cameo, the thought of Benedict Cumberbatch being in the DC universe would be a great win, um, in my opinion. He's a fantastic actor. Uh, he did a fantastic job as Khan in the Star Trek film, I thought, and it would be great to see him in those films. Now, the confirmed rumors that have been going around for a while now, uh, it was confirmed by the studio themselves and by the actor uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is set to play Black Adam in the Shazam movie. Um, Black Adam is uh, originally um, um, Captain Marvel slash Shazam's uh, nemesis. He is a villain. Um, in the recent iterations of the comics, however, he is more of an anti-hero, where although he clashes with heroes, he is also um, trying to atone for his crimes. Um, by doing some heroic things. Uh, so this is a very deep, deeply layered uh, character, and uh, The Rock is, gonna, is very passionate about this character. He's been talking about this for a long time now, and so I think he'll do a fantastic job with it, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what they come up with for the characters uh, themselves and who else will be in the movie Shazam. Most notably, who will be playing the titular hero, Shazam, himself. Um, so far, four movies have been um, had uh, domain names registered for the uh, company um, this week. Um, Shazam, Justice League, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman have all had domain names registered online for their films. Uh, this is not confirmation that these films are definitely coming out in the coming years, but it is likely. So, until we get confirmation, of course, I can't put a definite stamp on this, but it is highly likely that these films will come out um, probably after Justice League. Um, now on to television. Um, one of the most notable things to come out of Comic-Con for television was Arrow's panel, where they announced that the Season 3 villain will be none other than Ra's al Ghul. Um, and with speculation being that Liam Neeson was interested in playing Ra's al Ghul, although I personally did not think that this was a possibility, um, simply because um, they're already well into development and uh, probably have a different outline 
for the character, even though I think it would be great if Liam Neeson could be um, on Arrow. Um, but today, or no, a couple of days ago, they announced that uh, actor Matt Nabel will be playing Rachel Ghoul. Um, Rachel Ghoul in the show is the enigmatic leader of the League of Assassins. Um, he's ruthless, he's a calculating leader, um, and he is wholly devoted to his cause. Um, he truly believes that he is doing the right thing, um, which makes him even more dangerous because he believes in what he's doing. Um, and he will definitely be clashing a lot with Oliver this season. Um, Rachel Ghoul has been teased a lot uh, during the course of season two of Arrow, and now season three is going to fully pull Rachel Ghoul and the League of Assassins into the spotlight. Um, whether or not they'll stick to his comic book origins and have him be this immortal figure, or if it will be more closer to the Christopher Nolan outlook of the character where Rachel Ghoul is more of a title um, than an actual person that has been passed down over the years. Um, and it is cause for speculation considering um, the fact that Malcolm Merlin who was the Dark Archer in Season 1 and died in Season 1, um, somehow miraculously um, was resurrected in Season 2. And considering he was a member of the League of Assassins and that in the comics uh, the League of Assassins resurrected Ra's al Ghul for over 600 years because of these miraculous Lazarus pits that brought people back from the dead, um, it is possible they could steer towards that storyline. However, nothing is confirmed. Nothing about the Lazarus Pits has been mentioned. Uh, this is all speculation. Um, also, a teaser trailer was released for um, Arrow, showcasing a lot of action and um, humor mixed in. Um, they showcased uh, Team Arrow uh, settling into new careers as um, Queen Consolidated has kind of been thrown up into the air after the events of last season. Um, Felicity's working at like a computer tech store and she's trying to help uh, Oliver and Diggle wrap up the criminals of the city. Um, Oliver is pursuing a romantic relationship with her, um, kind of opening himself up to the possibility of being with her. Um, and new heroes and villains are going to be introduced this season as well as old returning villains. Um, most notably, Brandon Ralph portraying uh, Ray Palmer, who plays the Atom, uh, had, was featured in the teaser trailer, um, as well as Malcolm Merlin uh, training his uh, revealed to be daughter, um, what's it called? Um, Oliver's sister. I can, her name escapes me right now. I'm having a mental block right here. Um, but yeah, it's the trailer is full of a lot of action. And uh, we are looking forward to the Season 3 premiere uh, this October. Uh, Alright. TV still. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to give you my preview of The Strain and of uh, this new show, Grace Point. Uh, hold on one second. Um... It's getting this to load right now. Uh. All right. So, you guys still with me? Um, let's see. The Strain, okay. This is a preview for this Sunday's episode of The Strain. Uh, season 1, Episode 9, it is titled The Disappeared. Um, these previews are FX approved. Uh, there is no spoilers in my previews, so do not worry about spoilers. Air all the information in, this, in these previews is information provided by the trailers and the company themselves. So I promise you no spoilers um, will be in this preview. So here we go. The fight against the vampiric virus spreading across Manhattan hits close to home this Sunday on an all-new episode of The Strain on FX. 
Um, after suffering a tragic loss uh, last week's in last week's episode, uh, the group of survivors decides to head to uh, F's home. F being the lead character uh, played by Corey Stoll, uh, in search of his ex-wife and son, only to discover that his wife is now missing, and his son is left alone in the house. Um, with hell breaking loose literally and figuratively within the city, um, F and Nora uh, look for any sign of his wife uh, while the rest of the group goes in search of answers on their own. Um, they want to know who they're going to go in search of who the master is and how they can possibly stop him uh, with everything stacked up against them. Um, we actually get to see some more of uh, Satrakian's backstory during his World War II days. Uh, this will be closer to the end of World War II, and we'll see his encounter with the Master, his first experiences with him. Um, it has been a roller coaster ride of a season, really building up the, the horror and the heart pounding drama um, that goes into this kind of uh, environment. And FX has done a great job. Uh, it's clear to see Guillermo del Toro's influence on the show. Um, considering he helped write the book. And um, it's quite easy to see how this got a second season. So if you are a fan of the show, if you're a fan of vampires in general, of horror, I highly recommend you catch this Sunday's episode of The Strain on FX. Um, now on to an upcoming miniseries on Fox. This is called Grace Point. Uh, Grace Point... Um, is a brand new miniseries starring Anna Gunn, Nick Nolte, Michael Pena, um, who else? David Tennant, um, a great cast. Um, the show uh, is premiering on October 2nd, 2014 uh, on Fox, and it is a show that showcases the grim nature of child loss and murder. Um, and it will also showcase that even in small towns, People might not always be who they say they are, and your best friend may be monsters in disguise. Uh, the show takes place in a small Californian uh, beach town called Grace Point, and the quiet little burg is thrown into a lot of turmoil when the body of a 12-year-old boy named Danny Solano is discovered on the beachfront. Um, taking the elements um, of the hit drama The Killing and, inter and mixing it together um, with the elements of a small town drama, um, we really get, are given great insight into the chemistry that this community has with one another, um, while also showcasing that um, these people might not always be who they say they are, uh, especially when they're thrown into the face of danger, when um, you know the fear of the unknown begins to weigh on people, um, to they become someone different. That's the question. Um, the performances by the cast is phenomenal. Um, great, great emotional acting. Um, you really felt your heart break uh, for the family, but yet at the same time, you're, you're, you have to think in the back of your head who's responsible. Did the family have something to do with it? Um, the show does not give away anything easily at all. Um, even when you think you've had an answer given, you're given about 20 new questions, and it really makes you think, uh, which I really love about this show. Um, the whole question about the season is basically going to be, who killed Danny Solano? Um, who would want to hurt this kid? And you are going to be kind of playing amateur detective watching this because you're watching these flawed people um, forced to kind of interrupt their daily lives. Um, as they try and figure out who killed this kid. And uh, I think that it's going to be quite a wild ride. And so far it's a mini-series. I don't think it's going to be a full-fledged multiple-season series thus far. Um, but it is definitely worth watching. Um, if you like a good mystery, this is definitely something you want to watch. So, Grace Point premieres on October 2nd, 2014. Now... On to video games. One second, let me pull this up for you guys. 
How you guys doing? All right, the inter the connection interrupted for a minute. All right. Um, let's see here. I'm going to be going to On Request Magazine's Nintendo News Roundup. I do a lot of reviews, so bear with me, guys. Um, here we go. These are the Nintendo News Roundup uh, from September 2nd to today. Item 1. Um, two of Nintendo's most intellectual characters are coming together for the first time when archaeologi archaeologist Professor Layton teams up with the bumbling defense attorney Phoenix Wright, um, Ace Attorney. For a grand adventure in the Nintendo 3DS game, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Uh, they are forced to team up together to tackle a mystery too big for either one of them to solve individually. Um, and it combines the puzzle adventure aspect of the Professor Layton games with the courtroom drama aspect of Phoenix Wright. Uh, this game is set to launch on August 29th, 2014, so it is in stores now um, on Nintendo 3DS. Now, holiday season is upon us. The holidays are coming, and of course that means video game bundles. Uh, for Nintendo, uh, here are some of the bundles coming in your way. Um, for the Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS, uh, there is going to be the game is launching on October 3rd with the Wii U version set to follow this holiday season. Uh, fans who register for both the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS versions uh, of the game will, with Club Nintendo, will receive the Super Nintendo or the Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U premium sound selection. Uh, it was also announced that Shulk from the Xenoblade Chronicles franchise would be a playable character in both games. So that is a new character for the Super Smash Brothers. Um, also, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for Nintendo 3DS will hit stores and the Nintendo eShop on Nintendo 3DS on November 21st, 2014. So this November, the Pokemon games um, will hit the eShop this uh, November. Um, also, uh, the highly anticipated game Bayonetta 2 uh, will hit stores on October 24th, 2014. And starting mid-September, the new Super Mario 3D Wii U Deluxe set will include the Wii, Count Wii U console and physical Super Mario 3D World and Nintendo Land games uh, at a retail price of $299.99. Uh, also in September, a Walmart exclusive Mario Kart 8 Deluxe set will be released for the same price um, and will include Mario Kart 8, the console, and Nintendo Land games. Finally, uh, in October, three new t Nintendo 2DS bundles will hit stores with bundles including Electric Blue, Crimson Red, or Sea Green Nintendo 2DS systems along with a code to download Mario Kart 7 from the Nintendo eShop. These will all be available for $129.99 each. So those are the Nintendo News Roundup for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, um, for Honor Quest Magazine's personal video game needs, um, we are currently playing um, Dead Island 2, uh, not Dead Island 2, Dead Island Riptide. This is uh, a sequel uh, kind of a continuation, I should say, of the first game. Um, it is full, it's a first person kind of game. It's um, an open world environment, and uh, you are put into the shoes of a survivor who's immune to the virus who has to help another group of survivors uh, get off this tropical island that's been infected by a zombie outplay, uh, plague. Um, you have to battle zombies um, and zombies that have mutated into more powerful creatures. Um, there's a lot of action, some great storytelling, 
as with any other horror zombie um, genre kind of thing, um, the group dynamic is definitely strong in effect here. Uh, you can play it single player or cooperatively. Uh, it's a great game, and because the magazine is going to be covering um, the GameStop Expo coming up, uh, it, we are looking forward to this game even more because Dead Island 2 and um, another Dead Island game are going to be featured at the convention. So I'm looking forward to playing this game uh, and finishing it so that we can give um, our impressions uh, firsthand with the second game that's going to be on display. Um, so, um, those are my thoughts on our video game news. Um, for those of you watching right now, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. Um, we have a couple more items to go through. Um, now we're on to our YouTube section, our final section. Um, this first out announcement is that tomorrow we are going to be covering the streamies because um, they are going to be streaming the event live um, online. And so I will be covering the streamies and posting uh, the winners as they are announced as well as, as, well as any other news um, online uh, through my blog, which you will be able to find on the Tumblr link down below as well as on our website, www.onrequestmag.com. Uh, so you'll be able to see um, my coverage of the show there. Um, our final little bit of news item is, of course, every week during the podcast, we do a YouTube spotlight. And our today's, uh, or this week's spotlight is going to be on the hosts of the streamies tomorrow, Grace Helbig and Hannah Hart. Uh, they are hosting the awards. They are very well known for being great friends. Uh, their chemistry together is amazing. They're hilarious together. Um, it promises to be quite a great show tomorrow. And uh, they've both had great weeks on their own individual channels. Um, they both have had uh, or have um, books coming out. Hannah Hart recently had a cookbook come out uh, for her show My Drunk Kitchen. And Grace Helbig has her own personal book coming out as well. Uh, they both recently finished a short tour of live shows together uh, called the No Filter Shows with their other friend, uh, Mamrie Hart. And uh, they're kind of like on a roller coaster ride uh, through um, YouTube right now. They're doing a lot of great things, and they're documenting it for everyone else to watch. And I think their chemistry is going to show quite well during the streamies tomorrow. So make sure if you guys can get online... Go check out uh, Grace Helbig and Hannah Hart uh, host the Streamies tomorrow um, at the streamies.org, I believe is the link to the site. Um, make sure to check it out. Um, and make sure you check out their individual channels. Um, Grace Helbig, um, It's Grace, and Hannah Hart of My Drunk Kitchen, Fame, um, uh, My Harto, Your Harto uh, channels. So... That is our YouTube spotlight of the week. Make sure you guys go check out their channels and make sure to stay tuned for the streamings as well as our coverage of the show tomorrow. Um, in closing, um, before I give you our final announcement, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, give our condolences to... Uh, uh, hold on, we're getting an interruption here. Um... Hold on, this thing is slowing down. You guys there? All right. All right, we're back. Um, Joan Rivers uh, unfortunately passed away this week. Um, the entertainment world has definitely felt her loss, and we just personally want to give our condolences to her and her family. I know this is probably a tough time right now, and uh, you have our deepest sympathies for your loss. Um, she made a quite an impact on the world, uh, to say the least. And uh, like I said, from all of us here at Auto Request Magazine to her and her family, uh, you have our condolences. Uh, I'm sure I know she will be missed. So, in closing, this because this the podcast is wrapping up now. Thank you guys for checking it out uh, tonight. I am going to be doing reviews for two CDs. Um, one is from a band called Boiling Point. Uh, with their album More, right here. 
it's probably backwards, but that's what it looks like. Uh, this is going to be coming out on uh, September 16th. So I'll be doing a review for this tonight, written. Um, one of these CDs I will be doing a video review for as well. This other album is from a band called Evergrey, and this is what it looks like. I'll be doing a review for that tonight as well. This Evergrey CD is called Hymns for the Broken, and this album is coming out on September 30th. Uh, so I'll be doing reviews for both these albums. Uh, we might, probably will have interviews coming up for the bands as well. Um, if you want to find any more of our reviews, both written and verbal and visual, um, you can go to our website, www.onrequestmag.com. Um, there you'll find our reviews for television, movies, books, comic books, video games, etc., um, everything in the world of fashion, you know, all that stuff, YouTube, everything will be on the site. We have our live lounge, which has live performances from bands that have done live performances um, on their own YouTube channels and have given us permission to air on our channel, on our um, on our website. And, uh, yeah, there's everything you, want, you need to see is there. Um, also, if you want to watch uh, interviews and... Uh, reviews uh, in video format, you can go to our magazine's channel, youtube.com slash rockonrequest. Uh, Rock on Request was the former name of our magazine, uh, and because you can't change URLs on YouTube, that is still the URL, but we are still, we are called On Request Magazine. That's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of today's news items. Um, if you watched it live, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you're watching this recorded, thank you for coming out and checking out our podcast today. Uh, it means a lot to us, and we're glad you enjoyed it. Um, please give this video a big thumbs up. Um, please make sure to stay tuned uh, for my personal channel's daily vlogs and weekly videos. Um, make sure to check out the magazine's YouTube channel for any interviews, reviews, previews, etc. Make sure to go to the magazine to check out any articles, any news items, etc. Um, in the world of entertainment. Um, we recently had one of our writers start uh, another blog to cover television and fashion and more. Um, we have been getting a lot of screenings of shows lately, so we will find a lot of content on the website right now. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Please like this video, comment on it, favorite it, and share it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, just on a personal note, on a side note real quick, um, because even though this is a podcast for the magazine, I just wanted to give a little thing for uh, my channel since it's hosted on my channel. Um, we not only passed 300 subscribers this week, but today um, we passed 1,000 followers on Twitter. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported my channel, my work, uh, my writing, everything, uh, even you guys watching right now. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and, uh, you know, it means a lot to me that you guys uh, like what I do enough to uh, support me. So thank you guys. Make sure you check out all the links down below. Um, I personally have a Gleam contest going on right now. Uh, if you win the contest, you will be featured for a week on my channel in the end slate, and you will also be uh, one of the ways to enter in future contests so that you will get more subscribers to your channel. So make sure you follow the link. Um, it's on in the description down below. You can also find it on my Twitter. Um, enter that contest, and you could win. Uh, there's nine days left on that. Also, thanks again to audible.com. Make sure you follow that link down below to get your free Audible trial. Uh, you get a 30-day 30, uh, 30 free trial and a token for a free audiobook. So make sure you check it out, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week for another uh, edition of On Request Magazine Presents the Edge of Sanity podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Long days and pleasant nights.